Welcome to the Contra Costa Transportation Authority full board meeting for Wednesday, May 21st. Uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, I know. Uh, we have something new starting this month. Roll call. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Denise. Commissioner Abelson. Present. Commissioner Arnerich. Present. Alternate McCoy for Commissioner Butt. Present. Commissioner, let's see, alternate Leone for Commissioner Durant. <laughs> Present. Commissioner Hudson. Commissioner Mitchoff, Here. Commissioner Pierce, Here. Uh, Commissioner Taylor, <laughs> Chair Romick, Romick. Excuse me. I am here also. Okay. And uh, absent is Commissioner Metcalf, Commissioner Glover, uh, ex officio representative Smyrna DeVera, uh, alternate Keller, and Amy Worth is uh, absent this evening. So the record should reflect that we do have a quorum. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on to item D, public comment. I have one speaker car, Stephen Smith. Uh, Chair Romick, commissioners and staff, I'm Stephen Smith, resident of Brentwood. Most of you know me as the guy who sits quietly in the corner of these meetings taking notes. Some of you also know that I chair the Citizens Advisory Committee. Another of my public service commitments is to serve as director of the East Contra Costa Fire Protection District. And it is as an individual director I'm addressing you tonight. Responding to fires or severe medical problems is a matter of minutes. There is no making up for lost time. Once a fire company is dispatched and turns out, there are three main determinants of time to scene. The location of stations, the dynamics of crew availability, and the road network. Six days ago, I was meeting with Chief Henderson when a call came in of a vegetation fire along the railroad tracks passing under Vintage Parkway in Oakley. First, the units arriving declared a threat to the homes adjoining the tracks, which automatically upgraded our response to a total of five engines and a second chief officer. This is usually the uh, chief himself, so I rode along. It was highly instructive. As you know, Main Street in Oakley is a route of regional significance. Much of it is two travel lanes in each direction except for a two-block portion from Norcross to Vintage Parkway between Oakley City Hall and an upgraded shopping center. The roadway has been reconstructed and is now a single travel lane in each direction with a raised and landscaped median and some diagonal parking. It ends with a, rate, a major signalized intersection at Vintage Parkway. In any kind of traffic, this is an utter nightmare for an emergency responder. Ordinary drivers were highly impeded in their efforts to clear the lane for emergency traffic. We were finally able to thread through in a large SUV, but it would have been even more difficult for a full-sized fire engine. I have to assume that this design configuration for this street was allowable under current guidelines. But situations such as this need to be revisited and a repetition discouraged. I hope this authority can be instrumental in doing so. I would also like to share one other further experience which is relevant to items in the consent calendar. The fire board needed to increase credibility with the voting public to discontinue the existing firefighters pension submission in a new contract with local 1230. We approached the union with the attitude that a mutually beneficial contract was possible. 
It wasn't easy, but we eventually achieved an agreement on a contract that el eliminated the subvention, established a new salary structure suitable to a professional department, and kept the firefighters whole. Now, I would defend to anyone the excellence of the CCTA staff. It is not by accident the authority has great credibility with the public, the rating agencies, the construction industry, MTC, and CTC. At the same time, agencies in general are struggling to implement a paradigm shift in citizen expectations of public employment. If this can be done by this authority with a minimum fuss, all agencies benefit. I wish you good luck in this endeavor. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board at this time? If not, we'll move on to item 1.0, approval of the minutes. Second. Um, a first by Hudson, second by Abelson. Yes, my Yep. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Unanimously, Aye. thank you. Um, 2.0, a consent calendar. Um, I want to pull 2812. Is there anyone else that would like to pull any other agenda items from the consent calendar? I, I move the remaining items on the consent calendar. Second. Second. Motion carried by Ebelson, seconded by Hudson. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, 2812. Good evening, Chairman Ramek, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Ivan Ramirez, CCTA staff. Uh, this is an action item. At the uh, APC meeting held on May 1st, we asked you to authorize uh, uh, authorization for us to enter into a negotiations with a consulting management firm to help us uh, advertise, award, and administer the uh, construction contract for Balfour Road and Highway 4 interchange. At that time, we were going through the process of selecting the firm. We didn't have the name for it. Uh, the, we used the process that we've been using uh, for the last construction management contracts that we have. We have an on-call list established in 2011, and we call the next three or four firms so they can update their uh, staffing plan and their proposal, and, uh, and also for an interview. So out of that process, we selected the firm of SOMAS to be the most qualified firm. So uh, the action item today is that you give us the uh, authority to enter into negotiations uh, for scope and fee, and to also give us authorization to uh, issue a notice to proceed, not to exceed one hundred thousand uh, dollars, with <clears throat> with the firm Somas. Uh, the selection panel felt that uh, Somas was a notch above the other firms uh, for uh, three reasons. One was that they have recent experience with the bridges that we're building over there. They have some uh, technical aspects that are critical. We also felt that they have more, uh, they have recent relevant experience using the 2010 standard specs uh, the Caltrans uses to uh, advertise and award the contract. And we also felt that the resident engineer, who is the main person over there representing us, was more qualified than the rest of the firms. So with that, I am open to any questions. Questions at this time, staff? Um, I'm sorry, I'm missing, why was this pulled from consent? Is it different than what's on there or what did I miss? It was pulled from consent because there wasn't, it wasn't an action item in the consent calendar. And now yeah. we're going to make it an action item. Does Excuse that me. meet Brown Act requirements if we didn't well, have it as an action item? Uh, yeah, oh, okay. I, I, I think I can address that to Ross Chenden, Deputy Executive Director of Projects. So the item is listed as an action item on the agenda. Um, at the time of printing, we did not have a conclusion that we could put in the packet for you. So that what we have in the packet was that we would come in and make a recommendation at uh, this meeting. So I think what we're, so I believe what we're doing is consistent with what's in the packet. I'm just reading the, recommend the recommendation in the packet, and it says to enter into negotiations. Oh, is it that you've now selected the firm? We're That's naming, yeah. So there's four firms listed right. in there. So we're telling you which of those four, four we're recommending. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Taylor. Oh, I guess a question I'm asking 
Ross, is that CC, CCTA does this anyway, so it's a part of our structure. And the other issue I guess I'm asking is to make it an action item, we're going to phrase it that it is an action item. Right. It's listed as, I know, it's, I know. But what I'm trying to say, we're taking it off consent, so are we going to need a motion to make it an action item? That's what I'm asking. Okay, so we'd move separately, and consequently, that would get, not worry about this coming back to the board a month from now. Am I correct? Well, well you, you're correct. You will see it again. So um, I think what you may be getting to is there's multiple steps to go through to uh, advertise, exactly. award, and administer a contract. So uh, construction is not impen uh, imminent for the project. It's still going to start next year. Um, what we're doing now is to bring in the construction management team so that they can do a final review of the, or do a review of the final plans. So, so it's a constructability, biddability re review are the terms we, we use. So we're asking for your approval now to do a limited scope with this firm. What we'll come back to you later with is uh, for this contract, consultant contract, the final fee and, and scope of that. But furthermore, we'll come back to you to approve the plans and to authorize the executive director to um, advertise and accept bids on the project. That's the part we're, we're becoming routine at doing now. We have three uh, projects under contract with that method, and this will be our fourth. And it's our intent that we continue to do this practice as we feel we have more uh, control and more accountability in the process by us administering the contracts versus Caltrans. And I'd like to make a motion to do half of what you suggested because we're going to come back and finish the other half. Yeah, again, uh, to restate uh, the request from staff, it's to allow us to uh, begin negotiation with SOMAS, the firm that we're recommending for this contract, um, and to authorize a notice to proceed not to exceed $100,000. Um, upon conclusion of the negotiation, we'll come back to ask your approval of the full scope and fee for the contract. Um, I guess um, I don't mean to repeat, but I want to be clear of myself because I'm listening. The staff report says exactly what you said, except it didn't have the name of the firm. So the only reason this is being pulled was the name of the firm. It said, go ahead and negotiate. That's the action item with the firm. The name of the firm isn't here, and you've told us who it is. So the, the, the reason, that's it. The reason it's being pulled is it that's should fine. not have been consent because we did not tell you which firm. Right. So we are now verbally We're telling you which that. firm. So that's the only modification is add the firm. The firms were listed. It is the one that was selected. Okay, that's correct. Thank you. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Motion. I'll move staff recommendation with SOMAS be on the party. I'll second. Okay, uh, first by Hudson, second by Taylor. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries unanimously. Good call. <coughs> On to uh, item 3.0, major discussions items. There are none. On to item 4.0, regular agenda items. 4A, administration projects committee. 4A15, legislative update. Ms. Willis. Good evening, commissioners. Lindsay Willis, Contra Costa Transportation Authority. And I'm joined this evening by Mark Watts with Smith, Smith Watts and Martinez. Um, as you can tell by this item and your packet, there were quite a few changes. We had a very lively um, and in-depth discussion in APC about legislative items this past time. So hopefully all of the comments um, are fairly clear, but I'm gonna walk you through a few of the updates. Um, so first off on the federal side, um, on the, the day of the APC meeting, the Grow America Act was released by the administration. And since then, the MAP 21 Reauthorization Act was released by the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee. Um, both of these are kind of the first step of a very lengthy process on the federal side towards the MAP 21 reauthorization. And it's, it's really kind of too soon to give you an idea of what direction it's going. So I included in your packet kind of some basic information and the links if you want to look at them yourselves. Um, but we'll be coming back in future sessions with kind of more detailed 
explanations as they start to sort, sort themselves out. Um, on the state legislative side, you can see that the APC recommended some support positions on a few bills, and I'm not going to walk you through every, every one, but I, if there are any questions on any of the positions taken, you know, we're very happy to, to answer them or discuss them at this point in time. Um, and you'll also see that the APC asked us to draft a resolution um, around HR 29, which is well, I'm actually going to let Mark give you the update on that because he's a little better versed than I am. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. <clears throat> Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, Chair and members, uh, pleased to be here again this evening. Um, I'll start with a brief discussion on H.R. 29. Uh, that was the measure that uh, erupted uh, several, two months back now. Uh, it was a House resolution in the Assembly uh, passed with... Uh, a pretty good margin, um, and basically it urges uh, lawmakers to resist contracting out of services. And it, it contract cities, organization, League of Cities, CSAC, and a number of other special districts and entities were up in arms, but we were unable to stop it because it was amended just before it was taken up uh, on the floor. Uh, on the good side, it's a House resolution, so it's non-binding, but I think the concern that was expressed at APC is that it contains a number of clauses that are very troubling that seem to bind those who or yeah, bind those who voted in favor of this me measure to in the future support legislation that would implement some of the thrust of, of what they were trying to do in terms of shutting out contracting. Uh, so a number of entities have uh, post the passage of that moved ahead and taken op opposed positions to be on record and they've uh, tasked their uh, advocacy and legislative teams to monitor legislation closely throughout the rest of this session in case something pops up. And uh, I personally am been tasked with that, and I'm coordinating with the uh, uh, League of Cities and CSAC uh, in that endeavor. So the resolution uh, recounts some of the factors why uh, the Transportation Authority would oppose such a measure and uh, would, would set you on record uh, with a, a communication to the legislature saying we're, we're, you're opposed. I'd move that individual resolution. Second. Uh, first by Pierce, second by Hudson. Um, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Uh, moving on, uh, if, you, if there were questions that you identified with respect to changes in the matrix, I'd be happy to answer them. But I do want to bring uh, one bill to your attention that has uh, been changed since, and we haven't discussed this with APC, but it changed just this week. And this is Senator DeSaunier's uh, annual regional governance legislation. <laughs> um, although I think you'll be pleased to, to know that he's softening even – the verbiage in 792 as it existed coming into this week. Essentially, previously his bill mandated that each of the member agencies of the JPC had to develop a plan, go through a very structured outreach process, adopt the plan, and present it uh, through, uh, through the website and a whole number of other steps. He's now saying, please, instead of doing all that, if the member agencies should coordinate and develop an analysis of ways to find the means to reduce costs and redundancy. So it's, uh, it's a heck of a lot different approach than it was in, in, prior, in prior iterations. Uh, I don't have a recommendation on it today, but I just wanted to flag it for your attention because I know I've been watching this for three years straight now, so I want to make sure I was on top of this before I showed up today. That's great. Um, thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. And we do thank the senator for striking much of what was in there. Actually, we thank the Builders Association because they're the ones that got it removed. However, as it stands, what is left in the bill is you will cooperate and you will write reports and tell us exactly how you're going to do everything that's required in 375 and submit it every two years for our review, which is make work. I'm sorry. MTC has supported it. ABAG at our meeting last week said no. We oppose. I have just authorized a letter today to go out under my signature <coughs> saying why we oppose it and that I would like to meet personally with the senator to try to get him to withdraw 
the bill altogether. It is nothing but make work now. He's asking us to do what we're already doing under statute. Well, if I might just w w offer one other piece of ammunition, the CTC and the development of their STIP guidelines is going to compel CMAs, the CTCs, local transportation agencies to do that on a regular basis in preparation of the STIP. So, yeah. It's already being done. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? I would move and oppose. Well, I'll second it, but with the comment, I mean, it's the same thing at the Air District. They have our own subcommittee. They're, they're down there looking at ways to coordinate stuff. They're doing this anyway. And now to turn around and make a report every several years to what? To somebody that probably will never see the building. It's ridiculous. Just get out of it. Okay. I have a motion by Pierce, a second by Hudson. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? <laughs> Actually, my concern was that when he moves to Congress, he might decide to do this on a national basis, and I really don't want to go there. Through through the chair. Yes, sir. Mr. Okay, are we or we'll send a letter of opposition. Is that what is We're that what? No, but is that the motion? Yes. It, it's to oppose. Okay. Yes, it's to oppose. Correct. So. We haven't got a date for that yet, but I think I probably will see him on Memorial Day, so I will follow up with a personal request. All snarkiness aside, I think we do need to send a letter, have it on record Thank that you. we oppose it, because then someone in his staff with the requests that we want to meet. That way it won't get lost. Okay. All right. As amended. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries unanimously. Well, Mr. Keller. Uh, Chair Romick, can I, can I just ask one question about cap and trade? You have a brief comment in here about the restructuring <coughs> effort on, a, on the part of yeah. Senator Steinberg. Do you have any later information later than April 14th? Yeah, I was going to close with that. So this oh, I'm is sorry. No, this is perfect. <laughs> um, to set the stage, you know, cap and trade uh, has has been an issue of great heat in the capital. The governor has his proposal, about $850 million, and it's in the budget, the vast majority of which is going for high-speed rail or um, sustainable community strategies and then a, a variety of other purposes. Senator Steinberg tried to redirect cap-and-trade into a carbon tax, and that didn't go very far. But since then, he's now launched, and that, that must be what you're referring to, his approach, new approach to cap and trade, which does two things. Essentially, it leaves alone um, if, if for the main, uh, most of the 2014-15 budget proposal by the governor, but it sets the stage with different funding buckets going forward. And the buckets would include 25% uh, for transit, 20% uh, for affordable housing and sustainable community strategy infrastructure projects divided equally. Um, low carbon uh, uh, transportation, including uh, electric vehicles, uh, low carbon freight, and things of that nature, 15%. And the balance uh, for uh, energy efficiency and uh, a variety of natural resource projects that reduce greenhouse gas. That's where things stood about a week ago. Um, it appears now, as I was speaking with the Senate Budget Committee consultant who handles the cap and trade, um, They've been unable to come to an agreement between the two houses to put into the budget. So I think it looks like by Friday, when the full budget committees both meet, we'll see a deference to the governor's budget proposal for 1415 and a deferral until after the, the budget's completed uh, of the rest of the cap and trade for 1516 going forward. That's what it feels like right now. A uh, lot of work going on, I'll have to tell you that. You you can't walk down a hallway without people bouncing out of rooms with cap and trade written all over their forehead. Um, and and that, I'm talking about members, not not the general public or lobbyists. The, the members are actively engaged in trying to frame something that they can take forward uh, going forward. So that's my best assessment at this point in time, two days before the full budget committee completes its work. Okay. 
question. Thank you. Any other questions? Can yeah. I just do one, one quick follow-up? Um, has the uh, speaker or leadership in, in, the, in the assembly weighed in publicly on where their, what their position might be? They have not. Uh, we've had, I've had the occasion to have several meetings with their top staff. On, I, I accompanied Josh Shaw from the California Transit Association on one meeting. I had uh, another client, Metrolink, you know, on another meeting. They're not sharing what, where they want to go. It looks to me like they are hanging in on behalf of the governor, and I think that's probably a natural thing for a new speaker to do when she took office the day the May revise came out. It's kind of hard to develop your own vision and try to ram it into the budget process. So I think partially the fact that they don't have a public position um, has, has caused the consternation. It gets it to the point where they're just going to defer it. That's my, that's my assessment. Any other? Yes, Marna. Uh, yes, I'm curious about the enthusiastically support bill of Desaunier and the vehicle miles travel charges. Um, because um, I was just curious about it because in my, my job uh, as an insurance agent, we, this is the most emotional part when people are charged for the vehicle miles they travel. So I was just if you had some information about yeah, that. Just the flavor of the uh, discussion centered around the fact that this is a pilot program to test, to give the transportation agency the authority to examine the, where's, the ways and means to do this. So mm -hmm. I think there was a recognition that, uh, that the gas tax, the weakness of the gas tax, uh, given cafe standards and, and uh, lifestyle shifts, at different generational lifestyle shifts is, is eroding the tax base. And this is an, a potential natural mm -hmm. replacement. But it doesn't go so far as to authorize the state to do anything other than look at technology, look at some of the privacy issues, examine right. yeah. um, uh, some of the concerns. In Sacramento, the folks that are following this have been following Oregon and Washington very closely in mm -hmm. their efforts. and. We're coming to re they are coming to realize that Oregon's model of providing the volunteer pilot program participants with choices so they're not feeling like they're being thrust into one particular technology or approach or pavement approach is, is work starting to show um, that it's working. So I, I think um, folks are, are looking at the Oregon model eventually as a way to go. But in the meantime, this is just purely a pilot program. If I can, Kevin. Sure. I, I, if I could point to what you just said about the pilot program, I remember quite a few years ago a much younger council member put his foot in his mouth about shaping our future, how uh, that would never happen. And I don't, I would just caution this is a replacement for the gas tax according to what uh, we were told. So if you want to do a pilot program, I think. These are the kind of things, if it doesn't get exorbitant, these are the kind of things we'd like to see come from our senator. So, I mean, between enthusiastically get rid of this thing and enthusiastically support, uh, we're pretty much in the right ballpark. But, I mean, I probably three weeks ago when somebody in here told me that uh, they were looking at Oregon's VMT, I would have said five or six years ago, I hate it. And But we temper with age. So let's... Let's press that, uh, you know, let's get, let's get reports from Sacramento Monthly on how this is working. Yeah, yeah there was an extensive discussion of um, pilot VMT uh, studies, and we heard from um, both Oregon and Washington reps at the CalCog conference last spring. And what they do in their pilots is it's not both taxes. You pay one or the other. And so they have a method for dealing with that. And the intent, in fact, in the pilot in Oregon, it only applies to those vehicles that get more than 45 miles to the gallon because those are the ones that are not carrying their weight, if you will, with gas tax monies to pay for the rubber on the road. And so they are the ones that they are asking to pay the vehicle miles traveled fee. And they have several options, including a flat rate that they can pay per year, just 
How many miles do you think you traveled? You pay a flat rate per year. You have no dongle, no nothing. Nobody knows where you're traveling. You just pay a flat fee. Or you can have the dongle that can be read, and it just tracks the mileage just like your odometer does. It doesn't tell where you're going or who you're visiting or what time of day. It just says miles racked up. That's it. So they have several methods of doing that, and they're finding that most of the public really does get it. So it's a pilot project. Let's see what others have learned. Let's try it out. Uh, ABAG has taken a support position of this to do a study. Um, I think it's, it's the wave of the future. Something is going to have to change because, gosh knows, the gas tax is not going to support us um, the way it's going. So I would actually be enthusiastically supportive of this. Uh, as a pilot project so we can learn. Before we leave this uh, item of legislation, I, I'd like to make a request, if we could. Uh, and that would be, um, first of all, to think about the Caldecott Tunnel, which, as we know, is on time and under budget. Um, and tonight it's getting an award as an innovative transportation project at WTS, the Women's Transportation Seminar. And tomorrow, it's getting an award from the California Transportation Foundation as Project of the Year. Um, so it's great to, con to celebrate these, the opening and these awards, but there really is one unfinished piece of business. And so I would like to make a motion that... Um, we uh, name, recommend naming the new bore after one of the individuals in our community that helped make it happen. And um, that person is Jim Kellogg. And um, there's a process that you go through. Of, uh, <coughs> which, uh, once there's a, a resolution introduced, the legislation needs to be approved by the Senate Transportation uh, let, Committee. Let me, let me ask you something okay. to interrupt you now. Would that have to be a, a post agenda item yeah. versus so, so making a motion? It would, I'm asking that we do that to bring it back at to a bring future it back. meeting. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm just. This is just. I'm making a request that we, make in the area, to make a future agenda item on legislation, so there would not be any kind of voting today. I'm just explaining. Okay. I guess what I'm what asking. I'm asking first. Uh, and I'm interrupting. And I apologize. Uh huh. But I, I want to make sure. Do we need to go in such detail or should we well I just thought it would or, be, or just put it on the agenda that's kind of what I'm asking we could just put it on the agenda but that is my request there is a process okay. uh, it has to be sponsored by a legislator so I was just going to mention that okay. but I cannot do that if there's a reason not to do that well you know, well, you know we're gonna... no this would be the process to ask that it be put on a future yeah. agenda so so I am asking that it be put on uh, a future agenda, preferably in the near future. Okay. All right. And, and Thank you. Uh, in, in, any other questions as it relates to 4A? Well, are we going to vote on Janet's motion first? Well, that's where we, yeah. We're, okay. Do we have to? I, no. I just want to make sure. Yeah, just direction to staff to bring it back for a future yeah. agenda item. I don't right. think we need a motion. No. But I'd like... I think this board needs to weigh in, or its board members, on what kind of staff report we're going to be expecting. Uh, maybe, maybe a historical, um, what, last 10 years on major projects that have had, we all know and love Jim, or I know Jim and what have you, but, but before we go down that road, I, I want some criteria about why we would do this, what the background is, when it's happened other places in Contra Costa County, other places in the Bay Area. And I, because I don't want to embarrass anyone, uh, either on a for or against, but uh, I think we need to, uh, perhaps what, what I'd like to see is that this goes to um, APC to develop the criteria of what this, we want staff to come back with. Well, if I might interrupt, sure. the, the thing I was going to mention is the, the, in order to, the, the uh, Senate and Assembly Transportation Committee do have some criteria. Right, but I want to know what okay. we, our criteria is going to be. I, I'm not concerned okay. about <laughs> Sacramento is the least okay. of my concerns right now. I think we need okay. to give direction to our staff 
on, on for our consideration as to what we're going to do, what the criteria is for doing this. You're right, we would have to meet all those, but I want to know what CC, what, what we all think, and, and, and I don't even know to begin to think about what those criteria are. So I'm saying this suggestion should go to APC to flesh it out with recommendations to this board <coughs> as to what the protocol process would be for us to consider any major project that this board undertakes as to how we would name something, why we would name it, who qualifies for that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Uh, through the, no, no, I, through I the chair. We're, 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 we're way off the current agenda item, though. Exactly. We're way so I want to, but to bring it back and wrap this particular agenda item up. Well, right. So uh, then, here's what I was going to recommend. So my, we need I, to finish with these guys. Am I right. correct? Mm -hmm. And then correct. we would yes. go to... Your request. So, so what I said was, if if you might, maybe it was, was if we're at the end of that agenda item, what I would like to no, request no. Yeah. is well, request. Well, it would have been ideally if you'd have brought it up at seven two. Seven two. Seven two is a part of your commissions and part of your comments as part of that stuff, because this really it really isn't a related oh, okay. to four a, but yeah. I move that we okay. accept the legislative report and uh, Thank you. with direction as previously given. Was there more? Was there more were you finished? I just wanted on that last item, Senator Sonny's bill on VMT, I'm sad to say it looks like because the administration wants to do it without legislative direction, it will probably be retained on appropriations suspense calendar on Friday. So, uh, yeah. So I just wanted to give you that context before you made a decision. And to follow up, unless there are any further questions related to the packet items, we, we are finished with okay. this Okay, thank you. Thank Ms. you very much. I would like us to write a letter, though, to the senator telling him we do <coughs> enthusiastically support his effort for a pilot project and thank him for being forward-thinking in that regard. I, I believe... Um, when the board adopts official positions, either of support or opposed, we, we do generate a letter for the chair's signature. So we will be sure to do that for all the positions. Okay. Is there any other discussion? I have a motion by Mitchoff, a second by Taylor. Any other? <laughs> second by Hudson. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. Just pulling him out of the hat. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. All right. We have, we have a first and a second. Are there any other discussions? On this particular item, if not, can I have a vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. We're on to 4B4, review of report card of the One Bay Area Grant Program. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Martin Engelman, Deputy Executive Director for Planning of the Contra Costa Transportation Authority. Item 4B4 is review of MTC's report card on the One Bay Area grant process. And as you'll recall, MTC passed Resolution 4035. Um, and uh, it allocated funds to the um, congestion management agencies. In the case of Contra Costa, we received $45 million in funds, of which 16.6 uh, .6 went to local streets and roads, 4.3 went to planning, and 24.4 went to competitive projects that were split between TLC and uh, Bike Pit. The, um, the so-called report card was included in the planning committee packet, and it is a document that was authored by MTC staff and brought to the MTC commission uh, and the report card looks back at this uh, second cycle OBAG process and, and asks the question, you know, how did things go? Um, it, it was transmitted to us by letter from Steve Hemiger and Ezra Report, MTC and ABAG. And, and if you read through the report card, uh, it essentially, it, it, MTC is giving themselves a very good grade on how the whole process went and how the money uh, was allocated and, and whether or not their objectives uh, were achieved. And, and to be honest, uh, authority staff agrees with that, that from the, uh, 
from the regional perspective, if you look at it from the regional perspective, trying to uh, devolve the uh, decision making down to the CMAs and having the CMAs involved with allocation of funds, uh, it, it was a very successful process. Uh, so uh, we we agree with the report card. But if you if you take a look at the minutes from the April meeting that are in your packet, and see what uh, what you said uh, last month when we came through with the um, approval of the uh, priority development investment and growth strategy, which we had to update. Uh, a number of comments were made uh, at the time by Alternate Tatson, Commissioner Arnrich, Alternate Anderson, Commissioner Hudson about the process and the fact that when we went through the competitive process, uh, that 24.4 million in competitive grants for TLC and bike ped resulted in the SWAT area not getting any competitive funds. Uh, they did get uh, the local street, their local streets share, uh, but they didn't get any competitive funds. Um, and uh, we, we, we brought the report card to the planning committee and we asked the planning committee, in fact, ex exceeded in Contra Costa, um, that all of the jurisdictions in the Bay Region except for uh, one um, did get certification from HD, HCD, their housing elements. That was one of the requirements for receiving the funds. And all the jurisdictions in the, in the Bay Region either adopted a complete streets resolution or affirmed that their general plan complied with the Complete Streets Act of 2008. And then we go on to, to say that um, uh, the process was uh, was not without issues. And the issue is that if we follow the um, criteria in Resolution 4035, if we adhere to MTC's direction in, in Appendix A5, which we did, um, those, those factors lead to winners and losers. And uh, that's something that is uh, in conflict with the way we, uh, we've operated at the authority in the past. Um, and, and I think in the, in the long run, you know, uh, uh, there, there is geographic equity in the way funds are allocated, but in this particular case for the competitive pot, uh, we, um, we followed MTC's guidance. We did not spread the peanut butter uh, throughout the county. Uh, we um, uh, allocated funds to the most effective projects based upon the criteria that we were told to use. Um, but if you look at you know, who's accepting the housing, who's accepting the regional needs housing, uh, the SWAT area certainly does accept a significant portion of the arena allocation, um, and that's how the funds were allocated to the counties. But when it comes to the sub areas, SWAT was left out. So what we're suggesting here is uh, we send a letter that says for the basically heads up for the next cycle, um, we think that the outcome for the fund allocation should align with the regional criteria, essentially at the sub-regional level, so that sub areas that accept arena funds also and accept housing are indeed rewarded through the process. How we do that and, and when we do that um, is, is, is up to you and, and uh, the various committees that report to you. But we think this would be an opportune time to at least notify MTC that we, we indeed have a concern and we want to point that out to them and make them more aware of it. I think mean, the letter was very well done. Mr. Hudson? Yeah, I, when you hear your name in there, you better speak up. Uh, I, I think part of the feeling, and I'm going to look around to make sure that uh, I'm reading the room right, is that when we receive this report card, if you don't say anything, everything on there is okay. So you want to make sure that you're getting your opinion back to them. And we may have been a little... I hope I got the right meeting. We may have been a little influenced by Scott Haggerty's letter, where Scott, Scott starts off with, uh, you know, we love you, you're wonderful, but, and by the end of the letter, you're a rotten scoundrel, and, you know, we're not going to do anything you want. But we wanted something to go out that initially we think you're on the right track, but you may have missed a thing or two. So if it didn't get that in the letter, maybe we didn't accomplish it. But I, I think we did. Yes. Any other comments? Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, uh, just one. Uh, I'm in radical agreement with what, what Dave just said. 
Um, I think you've done, staff has done a nice job of balancing based on the comments from the planning committee, not over focusing on any, any construct or concept of so called regional equity, but really identifying uh, the tie that it appears this process missed, which was the rewarding of people who are actually meeting the arena numbers. So nicely done. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments at this time? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, I have a, uh, a motion by uh, Arnor. I, I, I was going there. Thank you. <laughs> Arnor Rich. A second by Durant. We need to turn these things so that they all chair. Yeah, well, that's why I had her print me out a list. I got a list right here in front of me. It was covered up, though, so I, got, I was scrambling here. I have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries unanimously. And for the record, let it be known that uh, Commissioner Durant has joined us uh, at our meeting. Yes. We had to do a roll call today. You missed a roll call. I did. Oh, yes. That's okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, item 5.0 is uh, correspondence and communications. We have none. Uh, item number 6 is associated committee reports. If there's not any questions, hopefully you've read all the letters that came in from uh, um, the um, regional groups. Uh, on to item 7.0, 7 7 commissioner and staff comments. I, 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 will be, I, went, I, I will call on you when it's your turn. Okay, I'm first though, right? So that's right there. Chair's comments. I don't have. <laughs> you said seven two first. Yeah. Romic rules. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, seven. I don't have any comments at this time. <laughs> Mr. Taylor, would you like to do? <laughs> Randy, help me over here. Help me. <laughs> Of course, Too he late. is your chair. <laughs> Too late. Oh, first of all, you do have a comment, um, Chairman Roman. You did a great job at the uh, ramps yesterday. Oh, thank you. And uh, would you, uh, now I'm going to hand it back to you for you to report on that because I think that was very significant for East County. Yeah, yesterday we had the, uh, well, I guess it wasn't really groundbreaking because we didn't have any shovels with us. But we went and stopped on the hard ground anyway. Uh, for the uh, official groundbreaking for the uh, connector ramps between 160 and 4. Uh, it's a very exciting project for Far East County because it kind of connects north and south. They're doing a great job going east and west, but north and south was kind of left out of the process, and now they'll be included in it. Uh, we are really well represented. The staff did a great job putting this thing together, and uh, thank all of you who are in attendance. Any other comments from commissioners? On to 7-3, executive staff. Any other comments? Commissioners, I have a few, a few comments, and I, I agree with you. That was a great groundbreaking ceremony, and the shovels are on their way. Um, the real ones. Yeah, the real ones. We, we, the first item in my report is very significant in that we were asked to join the United States Department of Transportation's effort to deal with Secretary Fox's decision to make all cars connected in the future. So we don't know what day that the OEMs, the automobile manufacturers, will have to have cars talking to each other. But it's, it's coming because he's made that decision. So we applied to be a connected vehicle testbed affiliate, <clears throat> which gives us proprietary information. So we signed a non-disclosure agreement, staff did. So we, we can't share a lot of the information. We're not really getting a lot of information right now. But what that did is that put us in, in the limelight of a few organizations sprinkled throughout the United States. And so we did it because we're so close to Silicon Valley. And if you read some of the reports, like Toyota leaving California, heading to Texas, and the, the CEO of, or the president of the United States Division of Toyota said it's nothing to do with California, just that we wanted to move to Dallas. Well, we don't really, at least, Myself, I don't see any advantage of losing these very smart, high-tech jobs to Texas. So one of the ideas that we had was to create a test bed in Contra Costa. And so after we signed this report and further down, I gave a speech, a keynote speech in Auckland, and, and a young man or a gentleman came up to me and said, we need to talk when we get back. And Ching Yao came to visit Jack Ross and I, and he's actually going to, he's affiliated with UC Berkeley. He's a professor there. He's a researcher. But he has Stanford, and so behind him as well. So that's one, one occasion where Stanford and UC Berkeley are together. 
And on an industrial track for when vehicles talk to each other, they're going to have to do research on this anyway. So they, they're going to have to have the money available to talk to each other. What we in the infrastructure business want to do is eavesdrop. We want to get information about speed, warn them about signal phasing and things like that. And I really think that Contra Costa is a place to test this technology because we're different than everybody else. We're not highly urbanized in every location. We've got rural areas that are very remote, very narrow roads. They're going to have to test their technology in, in the mountain region. They're going to have to test it in urban canyons. And we have areas that are fenced, gated off. So we have Rossmore. We have areas in Mayor Taylor's um, city of Brentwood that are, that are gated communities that we can do a lot of testing in there as well. And then I think we have a, a great area that's not developed yet, and that's the Concord Naval Weapons Station. And so what we've done is we've hung a shingle out saying, you know, we're willing to partner with you, Stanford, you, UC Berkeley, and some car manufacturers. We're going to go meet with Tesla tomorrow. I think it's, Jack, is it tomorrow? Next Wednesday. We're going to go meet with Tesla to try to get them excited about coming to Contra Costa. Mercedes-Benz wants to come to Contra Costa. They don't want to go to Dallas, Texas, or nothing against Michigan because that's where Ross is from, but they don't want to test their vehicles in Michigan. They want to actually test them somewhere in California. So... Hopefully you're behind this effort, but that is a very significant document that we signed so far because we've gotten a lot of interest from these car manufacturers and aftermarket suppliers of parts. They want to partner with uh, the Contra Costa Transportation Authority here in Contra Costa County, so we're excited about that. Uh, th segment 3B is, is progressing very, very well. It looks like the state route four quarter, the last three construction projects are, are progressing very nicely. Uh, well, actually, the last four. So you got segment uh, one or segment two, three A, three B, and then segment one is almost finished. And then we have the, the ramps, and then you have Sand Creek. The, the joke here with staff is that we're going to finish building the mayor's second bridge before they finish the bathroom remodel here on the on the first floor because it still isn't done yet. And I, <laughs> and, and I think I think the deck is. If it's not poured, it's going to be poured here very, very soon. <laughs> well, it's taking forever. I mean, it's, it's taking forever. And then Ross and I were invited to meet Secretary Jewell. She used to run, she used to be the CEO and president of REI. She actually worked for an oil company a long time ago. And so we got to talk a little bit about the, the HCP and, and the, the county, and Supervisor Mitchoff was with us out, out in um, – the entrance to the Black Diamond Mines. It was a great location. Gave me really bad allergies. It actually hit Ross after it did mines reaching like crazy. But we shook the secretary's hand and we talked about the success of HCP and how it accelerates our our construction program along State Route Four. And then I, the next year, the World Congress will be held in Bordeaux, France. There'll be ten thousand people converging on Bordeaux. The thing that they have, and it's in my new ways of moving people and goods is they have a tramway that's got a segmented third rail that they don't have catenary. So you don't have electrical wires running all over the city. What you have is you have an induction system that the tram runs on. So if we ever put a tram system here in Contra Costa, I would imagine that we're going to look hard at that technology rather than have a bunch of wires strung everywhere. So that's, um, that's my report. Any questions? Yeah, I do, if I can. Uh, one of the things... You weren't talking about the Cal Poly at the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. um, and the last line you've got, uh, you may be asked to present to a future class about fire. I hope, personally, I hope you go. One of the problems I have is we're getting back to a little bit more normalcy in cities. I'm trying to do this politically correct. And I would hope that not only councilmen, but a lot of our planning commissioners start going back to these classes and stuff we send them to. The problem I have, this is where it gets, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna dodge this part of it because it's not political. Some of the programs or the panels that are being arranged are almost like dumbing down. And I look at some of these panels like uh, where they could listen to what Randy has to say. I took a planning commissioner to a panel that had Ross and, and I forget who the other people, I'll just call it the financing is not funding. Uh, and they're willing to absorb some of this higher level learning, as I would call it, like a sponge. And here we have a sustainable community strategy, and I sometimes wonder, I'm avoiding the name of the group. Uh, I will just tell you that we have people, I mean, Lynn, 
and, and Robert Combs, and they're, they're willing to get some good people. We had a meeting for planning commissioners here two or three years ago, and I'm going, you need to get people like Ezra, like Jack Broadbent, like Steve Heminger, talking to you about how they're solving the problems of you know, transportation dollars coming down to people at this level. It seems like it's over their head at the planning commission level, but it isn't. These people are going to be sitting here at future times. And so any opportunity you get to speak, Randy, I don't know how the rest of you feel, but it would be nice to let him know, do it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, for that plug. We, we actually do speak everywhere we're invited, whether it's the tax, the, the citizens for taxes or what's the, the group? Contra Costa Tax Association to uh, universities to Rotary clubs to the, we, we, we were asked to speak at the new leadership class so every year there's a class of future leaders for Contra Costa we, we were asked to speak there Jack gave the speech there about the future of transportation <coughs> so we do where, whatever we can we also talk about what we do at the authority how we fit into the economy and also the, the benefits of supporting a sales tax in the future because that's how you get your transportation funded you just remind me of the most important part of it. One of the things I tried to do to this group is convince them that they've got to start, stop looking at the same old places that you go to, find something new, bring in new people. And it was the San Luis Obispo that caught my attention. I mean, you have rail in there. You still have the planes. It's accessible to both parts of the state, especially for the total number of cities when you start adding up the counties. And it's like, yeah, it sounds like a great idea, and okay, we're going to San Jose. Now, we went to Burlingame. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I mean, you need to start getting a little bit more uh, drawing in this new talent to show them, because land use and transportation have been fairly well merged. Thank you. Um, item 8 is uh, the calendars. Hopefully you, you've uh, looked at your calendars and you're, you're raring to go for the next two months, three months. Um, excuse me? <laughs> He's being sarcastic. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, item number nine, adjournment. We'll see you all next month. Uh, through, through the well, Mr. Chair. Taylor, yes, sir. Does Janet come back yeah. with her request? Well, she, I mean, I thought we pretty much had the request. We had everything in. I thought everyone needed to. I mean, the request was oh, made. Do we have to vote on that? No, we don't. No. No, we don't need to vote on it. No. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you all for attending tonight.